Welcome to Piano Well, Emily Oman is here. <laughs> uh, it's time for our next tutorial, number 30 something. <laughs> so it took me uh, around five hours, two days, to finish this piece from scratch. And by finishing, I don't just mean um, learning uh, and making the notes, time, memorization. I mean all musical means of expression, the layers of correct and comfortable movements, uh, sound imagination of all gradations of sound, including texture, harmony, dynamics, voicing, uh, clear structural phrasing and form, and lastly, breadth of emotional image and time. And all of these are done in order, very systematically, initially 100% correctly with no mistakes which is very important because you know most of our practicing is like okay we're getting to know the text oh yeah now I can play the notes and now the rest of my life or okay the rest of the month I'm gonna spend with relearning and correcting and fixing all my technical and musical problems and as I said before many times if we are able to imagine the notes uh, in the absolutely right way, the way that would reflect the notes that are written in the score. Basically, when we completely emerge our imagination, ourselves, our energy with the music that is written in the score, there will never be any uncomfortable sensations, musical technical technical issues to overcome. There, there will be no uncomfortable movements, harsh tone, uh, wrong touch, static in music to practice over and over again hour, during hours um, every day. So that's why it took me only more or less five hours to finish this beautiful piece. Now, come back to our tutorial, we're going to talk about phrasing and tone, including how to reach uh, this beautiful, poetic, delicate touch. And I think the tone part is a bit advanced, especially for those who are not familiar with imagining sounds. So I'm going to talk about this in the second part of the video. And we're going to start with the phrasing, because well, yeah, ideally you should imagine every note while playing, but phrasing is something that can be done without sound imagination. So it's in a way less advanced than the uh, tone part. And phrasing, um, as you probably know, will let your music flow be less static and will help your playing to have much more sense for you as well uh, as for your audience. So this, uh, this is the score where, where I analyzed uh, motives, phrases, and the sentences. And for those of you who uh, are courageous enough to try it on their own, uh, I will put the link to that score in the PDF in the description below. 
<clears throat> okay, I'm talking too much, that's a sign. So let's get started. Alright, let me give you an idea how you would play phrasing and what all those slurs mean that you can see on the screen. Now, small slurs across the bar line are motifs. So this is one motif. Bigger two bar slurs are phrases. So that would be one phrase. bit further in the next phrase there will be three motives so next phrase gonna be three bars this is first motive and the sentence is four bars or in this case five bars with two big slurs so these are two big slurs, one phrase, another phrase, but because the second phrase is going to have three motives, so that's why it's not four bars, but in this case, sentence will be five bars. So this is the first phrase. This is the second phrase. Okay. I hope that's clear. Now, motives, phrases, and sentences have always more prominent sections. In motifs, it's the last interval that leads to the first beat in the bar. So here, it's going to be B, A, and G, F. In phrases, it's a more prominent motif that is shown here with a red slur. So as you can see, one small slur is gray, another small slur is red, so the red slur is more prominent motive. So in this case, the first one, as I remember. <laughs> so this would be more prominent motive. The second motive, less. In sentences, it's more prominent phrase, just like in phrase we did right now. Uh, and this phrase are marked with big red slur, um, okay, let me check. Okay, uh, second phrase is more important in the sentence. So this first phrase is not that very important. And the next phrase is All right. Now, to be able to express the phrasing while playing, we need to intonate a.k. internally sing in between notes in the space of an interval with resistance and glissando this way. <laughs> so this is just an example. And this uh, resistance and glissando that you feel, that's basically our sensation that we need to keep while playing while we sing. So basically, you don't have to really sing even out loud, this glissando, but even if you sing with this sensation of resistance, but I'm not singing this resistance and glissando out loud, I sing out loud only now, so. So this is what we need. And uh, of course, ideally, you would need also a transferring weight while singing, but um, it's already too much for this tutorial, <laughs> so we're just making minimum today. So intonation is minimum what is required for phrasing. Otherwise, if you know everything in your mind, but you don't know how to connect it with your instrument while playing, and this bridge between you and uh, piano is your singing, then the phrasing will be flat. You can understand it, you can feel it so much, but as soon as you play, everything will be flat. Um, now, all you need to do is to intonate while playing and know where exactly you're going in the phrasing. Like I said, you need to know which section in every block is more prominent. So, let's say we have the first motive. So, if I would sing it um, quickly, <laughs> just to show you the energy level, I would back up, 
back half, back half, back half, back half in the beginning of the motif and I would bring everything to the last uh, interval and it would sound this way so and next place motif you don't have to even sing the pitch, you need to get the feeling now if we play it sound this way Now I'm connecting the phrasing and the main sections, the words, the bars. Uh, it's very important to have clear structure, constant breathing, because phrasing creates the breathing. So if you sometimes you may say, oh wait, there's a hairpin towards F, maybe that's the, the, the main interval in the motive. It already creates this not um, even pattern of breathing, and that will create such a mess when you're gonna incorporate it in the phrases or sentences. And I'm always coming to the main interval, which is towards the main first beat. And you can see my playing is still nice. There is no nothing mechanical or robotic in this. Okay, I'm talking too much again. Now let's go to phrases. So the phrase would be again the first motive more important. motive is more important. So, I think that's clear. And if you play by sentences, again, even with a bigger uh, perspective, we still keep inside main intervals and the main motives in the phrase. So in this sentence, second phrase is more important, so it's gonna sound this way. And you work the same way with every motive, then um, you're going through the piece with every phrase, and then you're going through the piece with every sentence. I hope that's very clear, and that will be our first advice to improve this piece. And for those who are advanced and courageous enough to stick with the second part of this video, Let's go to sound imagination, or in other words, how to control delicate, beautiful and poetic touch while playing. Because uh, when we imagine a certain quality of tone, our hands and fingers will adjust to that imagined sound and touch will be different. So sometimes people say, oh, you have to play DBC with a more flat fingers then the touch will be more, the sound, the touch will be different and the sound will be more gentle. Well, guys, you kind of need to look at this other way around. When you imagine delicate touch and gentle sound, then your fingers will adjust and as you can see, I'm kind of playing with open fingers. Because if I play with these fingers, the energy doesn't match because the energy of the sound that I create in my mind will be expressed in the more naturally flat fingers. Okay. Um, again, in this uh, sound imagination part, we're gonna try just minimal. So we're not going to talk about movement of the sound, the sound of the sound, we're just going to imagine sound in different textures, alright? So the texture of the sound itself is made of the pitch that you always have in your mind. Pitch means basically the high of the tone, not necessarily in the piano, but something like when you walk on the street and you hear the music in your mind, it's like... <laughs> 
uh, enjoying your song in your head. That is the peach. And the pedal, watery, deep texture of the peach. So let's say we have this peach. Uh, it's kind of dry, clear now, and you play it in the pedal. Wow. So now it's more water vibrations of more fluid. And now with this fluid texture, you can go deep down. So this is your texture that we need. It's a peach paddle watery texture and a, a sense of depth in that sound. And if, for example, I would sing uh, without any texture, just a pitch. Now, if I imagine it in that texture. Again, I'm not opening my mouth and diaphragm bigger. It's again naturally because my body is responding to the sound that I imagine in my mind. So that's why without, with, so you can hear it through the singing, through my singing. Now the same way you will hear it through the playing. <laughs> so this is our basically, how to say? basis basis for creating now other colors of this tone in our mind for example harmony what is this noise uh, okay so as you can see in the score i circled here the sections that represent each harmony all you do is play them on the pedal and get emotional scent of every harmony so let me show you what I mean. This is one harmony, one circle. So you play all the notes together and you describe it. It's light, it's uh, shining, it's beautiful, it's very clear, uh, magical. Like a, like a well and like a spring. Now you're going to next one, circles. Oh wait, there is a minor here. <laughs> so it's more subtle, more calm, not that uplifting as, as the previous one. So more calm and more maybe even sad and cold. The next one. Okay, let's. Oh wait, there is something painful in this harmony. But not very tragically painful, but still on this high level energy painful okay next one yay we come back we resolved to a beautiful e major again very calm i know in my imagination e major it's always like a um, sky it's always blue color mm -hmm. it's very open and beautiful and this is what you do with every harmony then you go to the next one again minor and it's a bit darker minor than this minor. This is more open to going to some wonder places. Wonderful. Again, a little bit more painful. circle play together on the pedal listening and get the sense so all you need to do is get the beautiful emotional sand atmosphere of every harmony now come back to the texture of a note and color it with that harmony sand so let's say we have the C sharp all right Let's say we have a pitch, we imagine it on pedal, we imagine it with a depth. Here we go, this is our sound. All right. Now, remember this, I'll play again. Harmony. And in a way, I don't, I don't have any better words to describe it, but you really color 
this texture in your mind with this harmony. And this is what you get. You get this touch of the C sharp. Now let's just experiment and try to color the same note with different harmony. So we have, for example, we have here another one. Now C sharp in the color of this harmony. Next bar, we can see again this one. Again, color this C sharp in your mind with this harmony. Again, touch would be different. So either is this or this or this, and these are your gradations, and these are the nuances that will affect your fingertip, that will affect your touch and create beautiful tone in um, this Debussy music. So. All are different in my mind and my touch. Oh, so this is just an example how harmony imagination affects our touch and um, creates different touch, create different sound in our mind. So let's just summarize and uh, I'll tell you what to do. So we need to get all the notes together in every uh, circle, listen to the harmony, describe it, more tense, less tense. And imagine texture of every note in that circle, in that harmony, meaning that every note from this circle will be imagined in this sense of harmony. And then play while imagining every note before touching the key. Not like you imagine the first two notes and then you play having nothing in your mind. No, you imagine note, you touch it. You imagine next note, you touch it. You imagine next note, you touch it. on your fingertips depending on the harmony that you imagine. It's such a beautiful way of practicing, really. So listen, feel, describe, imagine and play. Basically these four points uh, that you need to do. Now we can also add dynamic level to our imagined sound and texture and harmony and you will find out that to make the tone interesting, more intense and rich, we don't necessarily need to use dynamics only. So, you know, like sometimes, oh, you're playing is so boring, maybe you just need to play fast, or maybe you just need to make a little bit bigger dynamics waves or something like that. Nope. <laughs> when you actually, uh, you can play with different colors and intensity and richness of sound, if even in the, in the, um, the limits of piano dynamics, you can still feel and change uh, your tone and touch depending on the harmony. And uh, for example here, okay, <laughs> don't need to go far away. So instead of playing this, you can say yes, it's the same dynamics, but uh, it doesn't sound nice. So maybe we can make some little crescendo. So. And this song. Yeah, that's one way, very primitive way. But how about you still in the piano, but you change your touch and tone and playing with changing your harmonies. So... annoying B, it would be so nice, but you can feel, it's like the tone becomes sometimes more clear, more, um, more light and sometimes more darker. These are the aspects that um, we're talking about when we're talking about harmony.
even though I'm not changing dynamics. <laughs> Sounds will be very expressive if they reflect different colors of harmonies even in the same dynamic level. <laughs> so if I would imagine notes in texture harmony and piano while playing, it would sound this way. I mean, I just show you this. So, all I'm saying is that, well, guys, you can imagine the whole DBC in uh, dynamic range of piano, except those parts where he actually wrote crescendo with letters and he did uh, put forte or mezzo forte as a dynamic sign. Everything could be piano or pianissimo, but it could be so interesting if you just imagine harmonies, if you include harmonies in your imagination. And uh, the last thing is, of course, you can apply to all of this beautiful background voicing. The voicing where you kind of light up some melodies or main mm, notes. Sometimes you would make like longer notes. I mean, I don't need to explain you how to find voicing. But the point is, never imagine voicing more tight. Always imagine that you keep the same texture, depth and warmth and softness of sound with the same scent of uh, harmony. But because you simply putting yourself in your imagination again closer to that imagined sound, the sound becomes more in a way intense but it's still full and beautiful. So for example here, so everything is soft, right? Everything is But if I just imagine that I'm standing closer to this voice, then it changes everything. Interesting also thing that sometimes when people say voice, they just like, oh, just play the background softer. But it never works if you play. If you try to play background softer, then still voicing is not, um, how to say, it's not f flowing. But instead, if you imagine the voice, then the background will become softer naturally. place here so it goes um Would work. 
always keep in mind when you imagine a voice you don't imagine it's more sharp and tiny but you imagine that you it's still the same texture but you stay closer and it's more intense you can see more you can feel more and um, yeah that would be it <laughs>